Thank you, Michael. I appreciate your kind words. Um, and I sometimes do wonder why we take on some of the challenges that we do, but by and large, it's pretty rewarding. Um, and first of all, call out congratulations to GPT and to Melbourne Central. Um, I calculated that you beat us by $358 per square metre. Uh, so we're out um, trying to work out two or three retailers that will get us back at to number one next year. So watch this space, but congratulations, great effort. And Mark, to your point, I mean, it's been an amazing turnaround, that asset. It's been um, a fantastic one to watch. And I think that's the interesting thing. I think um, when you have a vision for an asset or a strategy, it really does take tenacity to stick to, to your guns and to work through and to deliver that. And I, it's a testimony to you and also to Chadston. So I thought I'd take a, a little bit of a different turn, thinking that um, hopefully everyone really understands Mervac and our strategy and our portfolio. And we, uh, across the board, we have retail, but we work for a great company and our company's purpose is to reimagine urban life. And I must admit, it's a, it is really a privilege to go to work to every day to work through how we can actually reimagine people's life working in these um, amazing cities that we operate in. But it was interesting reflecting just lately, um, and it's, we could take a, uh, maybe a straw poll a bit later, as to whether or not it's me or has the world turned into a rather depressing place of late. And obviously, Michael, you touched on uh, Christchurch, which was just terrible. And I think there is a lot of concern and negativity in the air, which I think obviously pays into retail. Um, and I think that's one of our challenges, actually. But well before even the events that happened last week at Christchurch, I think reading and listening to the news, and apologies to Carolyn, I saw you here, but not your news, but generally a lot of news can be quite depressing. Um, and I think that can be a bit of a health hazard. That's why I'm a big fan of retail therapy, because it does make you feel very good generally. But this is, I think, being driven by, and we've talked about this a lot within our organisation, I think a loss of trust, and I think in politics, and I think it's fair to say across the globe that it's pretty toxic and I think the ability to debate and to really respect other people's points of view I think is something that we need to really try and encourage back within our corporates but also even, even in our discussions with our stakeholders and our partners within our business and I think there's also obviously lost in, in corporates and you know we're all generally in corporates but particularly in banks um, and I think trust in public institutions uh, and the church I think the church is a big one. And I think this flows into other areas, which then again starts to hit our hip pockets, which again impacts retail, so house pricing. And this obviously underpins so many household balance sheets and really has an impact on us. The rate of growth, the cost of living. Um, I think we all wish that we'd have those MAT double digit growth figures when you look at the cost of living versus where sometimes um, sales figures are coming out. And I think business and consumer confidence uh, obviously plays into this. And the thing that really, really uh, resonates and gets hard, and I think we are just talking about at the table when you're out on investor tour, is just, just this constant negativity about shopping centres and the death of the mall and bricks and mortar retailing. And, you know, I've said many a time at these functions that all retail is not created equal, and I think we're really starting to see that evolve. And I think, as an industry, we know where the, the good retail assets, and I think we'll look at a lot of um, real estate repurposing over the next few years. And I think that's quite exciting, again, if you have an organisational purpose, which is how do we actually reimagine what communities can be, and obviously Michael and Sid and a few others have touched on those points. Um, so I think one of the things that this does is it really, um, we tend to forget about the good things in life, and I think this has a real risk in taking away much of the momentum of all the great things that are actually happening, especially in the shopping centre space. So I think it's a, an amazing place, and I don't like to brag, but I hit just over 30 years in the shopping centre space. So really like a major slice, so I've probably got another two more options to go and then I'm out. <laughs> so I think we need to continue to remember and to embrace our industry's entrepreneurial spirit because if you actually think about it, we were once the disruptors. And I think that's a really important point to reflect on. And so I think that what we need to do, and I think a lot of us are doing it, is to continue to reinvent and we need to disrupt back and prove everyone wrong. And I'm sure we're all acutely aware of the infinite opportunities thrown up by the shifting landscape and are committed to applying our experience, not the experience physically, but our experience, um, creativity, innovation and customer insights to drive change that makes a significant positive impact on people's lives in the communities that we operate, which we've touched on. And I love days like today, and I call out to Michael and Leanne for hosting it, though I did say to Greg Chubb, I don't know which I regret more, a birthday or shopping centre news, because it means I'm another year older, 31 years. Um, 
and where we all come together and I think really look to collectively, to, sorry, to celebrate our collective successes. And I think we really should do that and I think today is a great day to do that. And I think if we need to be reminded and uh, we need to recognise that the very core of retailing, the very core of what we do and our retail partners do is rooted in creating everyday inspiration in people's lives. And I think sometimes we forget about that and that's really what we're here to do. So what I'd like to do and call out on is a few retailers that have inspired me and inspired our business to, to put them into the centres, um, particularly the centre that's going to come back next year. Um, I th we, we, Mecca's just about to open at, at uh, Broadway. I think Mecca is an amazing business. And you think about all the competition that's come in and how they have really found their place within the market. Now, if I'm going to back a retailer on a partnership, that is a retailer I'm going to back. I think about Dacuba, you think about everything that's gone about fashion and you think about what a successful retail brand that has been and the way they conduct themselves in business I think is really impressive as well. I know Leighton Apple is, a, is, a, is an old one but it's, it's a beauty. If you think about how they have stuck to their strategy, how they have really worked out what are the markets they need to operate in and how they make people come to them and how they make people have a great experience, everyone should study Apple, they are an awesome retailer. Harris Farm, you think about that as a generational business, the way they have continued to reinvent themselves, to reinvigorate themselves. And if you look at one of the impacts that we've had on Broadway, has actually been the Harris Farm that opened up at Leichhardt. Fantastic offer. And people, you know, we we're talking, Chubby again, need to sit next to different people sometimes. We we're talking about the impact that they've had in opening up their Linfield store. Linfield store, store. I mean, people are changing their shop, shopping patterns for plums and oranges to travel to Harris Farm because it is a great, great retailer. And on the, you know, you think, okay, well, they're slightly bigger retailers. We have an amazing retailer at Broadway called the, the Merchants of Ultimo, um, a, single re a single sort of store retailer who has really invented the way that food is done at Broadway and they're doing a phenomenal job. So um, I'll leave you on that note. Sorry, Greg, I know I breached, probably not as quite as long as Stuart, but um, I think it's great. Good luck to everyone and uh, look forward definitely to seeing you next year.